Hello there, my very good friends. On today's wrestling news, a big return has just been confirmed for the Raw after WrestleMania. I'm going to tell you about almost a surprise WrestleMania opponent. We got a major update on Brandy Rhodes' future. And a WWE wrestler has rejected a contract. I'm Adam Wilborn. And I'm Andy Murray. And this is... Is the news. Big return confirmed. Oh, he's coming, baby. After WrestleMania 38, the biggest case of blue balls in WWE history is about to be cured because Veer is finally going to come on the 4th of April. That is the Raw after WrestleMania 38. Of course, this was revealed on last night's episode of Raw when WWE, in a very lame and disappointing showing, decided to finally kill off the Veer is coming <laughs> meme for good pricks by spoiling the fun yeah. by revealing that's going to be Veer's uh, re-debut date. 4th of April, as of right now, he's going to be there. Do they have a plan? Nope. Who knows? No. <laughs> it's probably the right answer. But yeah, there you go. This follows months and months and months of vignettes about him biting his time and coming to Raw and all of this stuff. He was obviously split from Shanky and Jinder Mahal in the draft last year. Since then, it's been constant vignettes. In fact, recently, he actually broke Emma Lina's record for the longest yes. gap between the first vignette and actually showing up. <laughs> and you know how Emma Lina went in the long run. The difference with Veer, I guess, is that he has been active on main event. He's been kicking everybody's ass, mm. putting together an undefeated streak on main event. But hey, I don't think there are too many rabid main event viewers uh, amongst our audience. So, yeah, uh, yeah Veer's finally going to come. What do you reckon of uh, the big man finally getting his end away? I am so excited for this. I can't believe. I was, I've been so like, oh, yeah, Veer, 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 Veer. And then it sort of got a bit ridiculous. And now I'm going to be in the building with Simon Miller, who's even more excited than everyone else, to watch Veer come. <laughs> I, I, I'm so I don't know what's going to happen. Is he going to break through some Ikea furniture? He loves Ikea. Entrance? He loves Ikea, doesn't he? He <laughs> like, was posting photos there the other day. It's it's fascinating. We're going to come back to this story for the end finally because I've got a little bit of a social experiment regarding it. But I don't know why they've done this for so long. They clearly sort of went, all right, we'll bring it back then. And then they sort of went, uh, you know, the thing, you know, yeah. where they go, oh, well, actually not there next week. All right, not next week. No, all right. Well, uh, and then they've just got the Raw after WrestleMania, I which is just generally when people oh, return probably. anyway. I think they liked the idea of bringing this guy back to TV. They just didn't have a plan, exactly. Which they still don't. Yeah, it doesn't bode particularly well. But hey, look, Veer. They're going to feed him someone that was crap in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle yeah. Royal. He would say, I didn't get my opportunity. And he's going to come and wreck them. And then he go, right, I don't know what we do with him now. At this rate, it'll probably be poor old Apollo Crews. Yep, probably. He's getting squat. Him and Aziz are just getting squished every week. Look at this. You set off me up. Spike it down. Because you know who beat him this week? Almost. Hey! As well as beating Commander Aziz at the same time. Poor bastard Commander Aziz. He passes that airport test, doesn't he? But not when you stand him next to the yeah. bloody Omos. Was it 10 matches in seven years? Yep. Uh, anyway, moving on. Omos um, has apparently got a surprise WrestleMania opponent. Please be sitting down for this, because this is possibly even more shocking than the news that Veer is coming. Steve Austin. WrestleVotes <laughs> tweeted that he has a colossal singles match, or that the Colossus, sorry, has a singles match. Fightful Select, no crap, just sap. Sean Ross sap of Fightful Select. He did them. Now reporting that as of this weekend, the planned opponent was, drum roll please, brrr, former WWE champion Bobby Lashley. What? Lashley obviously has been missing uh, since he was written out on the uh, Elimination Chamber with an injury, blah, blah, blah. Couldn't defend his WWE Championship that he won from Brock at the Rumble. And we all sort of assumed he was off WrestleMania as a result. Now, yeah. apparently, I mean, almost did cut a promo basically saying, there's no one who can stop me uh, on last night's Monday Night Raw. But I didn't think he meant Bobby Lashley when he was talking about that. <laughs> I love Bobby Lashley. I think he's a freak of nature, incredibly talented as a professional wrestler. I don't know what he's going to do with Omos, though. Yeah, I imagine this probably depends on Bobby and his injury status and his recovery, but it's a weird one, this, because I love Bobby Lashley. I think he's awesome. Um, but is he someone you really want to get squashed by almost at this stage? I would argue no. No. I mean, maybe... No, no, no. Yeah, like, maybe later down the line, he's somebody you could maybe use to, to put, like, someone like almost over. He's probably uh, used to it, but I feel like almost has hit his ceiling. Yeah, I mean, the thing with almost <coughs> is he's not very good. 
right? <coughs> like, he's good at being a big lumbering stiff. And, like, there are certain... Like, I really enjoyed the AJ tag team. That was just... It was just fun. They're yeah. contrasting styles. But, like, these singles matches... Uh, even in, like, these like two or three minute showings, there's a lot that needs refined there. And like, I'm not one of these people who harps on botches or I hate that culture. I hate that whole cottage industry of morons on Twitter who go, look at that guy's mistake. Ha ha ha, I've never done anything with my life, but look at that guy failing. Uh, I'm not one of those people, but like he does have some seasoning to go before he's at the level WWE wants to be He's not never going to main event WrestleMania. He's never going to main event the pay-per-view no. if you've got any bloody sense. But it feels like they kind of want him to. And it's a bit like, ah, oh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, Why did you get rid of only Lorcan then? Because look what he did with Lars Sullivan. Yeah. Just have him bump around all of it shop. Yeah. Not Bobby Lashley. It's weird. He's the, wor the last time we saw him, he was the world champion. And you're going to feed him to Omos. Yeah. Bonkers. Or you're going to have Bobby Lashley wreck Omos, which is probably the right decision if the two of them are in the ring. And then what have you done with Omos? Nothing. Yeah. You've had him beat a yeah. uh, former Intercontinental Champion and he's heavy. And then that's been about it. Yes. The problem Just is... Just put him in the Andre. Yeah. I mean, the problem is it's like when someone isn't suspending your disbelief, mm. as almost isn't, it's very difficult to buy into them. Uh, I think they can probably do something really cool with him, but I do think he needs a bit more work before we talk about beating Bobby Lashley. Then again, uh, did you see the numbers that the Battle of the Giants did on YouTube? Well, there you go. There's your answer, right? Is it second to like yeah. uh, the, the Rock and Austin and Hogan yeah. spot or something? Gigantic human beings. There you are. <coughs> I like Bobby Lashley and I like Omos. I just don't think it's the time. No, is exactly. What I'm saying. Anyway. Uh, but anyway, before we move on from that, uh, Omos's match at WrestleMania, I should remind you that we have got a beer ready for you in time for WrestleMania. Uh, Michael Sidgwick came up with a genius name. Clickbait thumbnail. It's got yellow arrows on it. It's a 5.1% YPA. And if you uh, go to topropebrewing.com now, only if you're in Europe, sorry to our American viewers, uh, and enter the uh, promo code, here's why, you'll get 10 delicious beers, including our very own, which I think the first glass of which was made yesterday, Top Rope Brewing uh, on Twitter shared something along those lines. If you do that, you can get those 10 delicious beers ready for you in time for WrestleMania. Uh, 45 quid, an absolute bargain if you know what you're drinking. And uh, yeah, don't go and get it, clickbait thumbnail from topropebrewing.com, get our WrestleMania beer package. And speaking of WrestleMania, if you are going, make sure you head along to WrestleCon, WrestleCon.com to go and get tickets. We're gonna be there. We're gonna be pestering lots of celebrities who you can meet as well. Uh, you know the deal with this. It's always fantastic. It's so mad to walk into a room and just be like, oh, Hall of Famer, legend, my favorite wrestler ever, etc., etc." WrestleCon.com, if you wanna go and get tickets for that. It is a fantastic, just additional part of WrestleMania weekend, isn't it? Absolutely. WrestleCon.com is the place you need to go. Yes. Okay. What's next? Stories. Good. What have we got on Brandy Rhodes? I feel like I'm malfunctioning. <laughs> <laughs> right, Brandy Rhodes. What's she up to? Um, well, there was a report last month stating that she probably wouldn't be following or going with WWE, going back to WWE for her husband Cody. So you're telling course. me that my pitch storyline of her interrupting Pete Dunne and saying, who the hell told you it was open mic night, Butch? Isn't going to be happening. I don't think it's going to happen, brother. Damn it. I don't it. think it's going to happen. So, we, yeah, we discuss, we've we discussed that in the past. Cody is a dead cert, seemingly to go back to WWE. Brandy, not so much. Um, we got an update here on her next project, and it looks like she's going to work to bring a shot of Brandy from YouTube, mm -hmm. which it was on. It was on AEW's official YouTube, to television. Uh, per deadline, she's uh, going to be partnering with DIGA Studios. Uh... Shot Brandy is going to be a 13 minute series. It's going to have a variety of celebrity guests from inside wrestling and outside, according to the initial story here. Uh, Brandy, got, got a quote here. Uh, I started shooting this show in my kitchen four years ago with two iPhone cameras and a cocktail. Good start. <laughs> uh, I am excited to see the show evolve and thankful for the fans who have followed along. I assure you, now that I'm working with DIGA, the best is yet to come. So she's working with producer Tony DeSanto, who has previously worked on uh, Hot Ones, the game show. So oh, wicked. That, it's quite a, a natural progression. That another, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, another show about food and banter. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Obviously, you won't be seeing Shot of Brandy on AEW's YouTube channel anymore. Brandy is no longer with AEW. She's no longer the chief brand officer. The Rhodes family have split, apart from Dustin, of course. 
Uh, there you are. I, she's, I think she's a really good host on these shows. Uh, and uh, she, bringing it to television seems like a natural fit for her. So fair play. This sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun for her to produce. Yeah, it's going to be really exciting. I think it's, it's a great idea for her to transition into something like this. And especially if Cody's going to be in WWE, I'm saying obviously they're all going to get other celebrities, as you mentioned there. But if you want to get wrestlers on there, pretty good to have your other off in that locker room going, what are you doing next Tuesday? Fancy cooking up and having a, having a drink with my wife? Yeah. Because it's, I think it's a really entertaining show. It's a good show. My pitch for the first guest, Biggie. He's not busy. He's recovering. Perfect. He deserves that sort of exposure. Get him on there because I feel like he's a whiz in the kitchen and that would be a really great episode. Or Brock Lesnar. You know, either or. <laughs> either or. Well, he is into butcher stuff yeah, these exactly. days, isn't he? Chopping up meat every weekend on the socials. It's class. Anyway. Baron Corbin, your best mate. Yes. Game well, in there yeah, as well. Yeah. I've, I've, I've learned better from uh, speaking to little Baron Corbin, yeah. so let's move on. Okay. <laughs> let's move on and talk about the WWE wrestler who's rejected a contract. Andy is it Murray. Brock Lesnar? It's not Brock Lesnar. Uh, is it Roman Reigns? It's not, but it is. Becky Lynch. A former WCPW oh. legend, Flash Morgan Webster <laughs> of NXT UK, uh, is apparently re working on a sort of short term contract extension. But uh, it's not seemingly working out, according to Fightful Select. Um, his previous contract was due to expire in February sometime, and negotiations have seemingly hit a wall. Webster currently uh, injured. Injured? Injurized. Injurized. Uh, injured. He's on the uh, long-term absentee list. Uh, not wrestled since October 2021. He revealed in November he had been fighting surgery for three years, torn labrum, which sounds like it absolutely yep. sucks. Yep, yep. Uh, obviously, former NXT UK Tag Team Champion. Um, it's interesting this because normally it feels relatively straightforward when we talk about NXT UK stuff, but yeah, not so straightforward here, Andy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's interesting, I think, in recent months that NXT UK, like guys like Walter, uh, and now we've seen A Kid going over to mm. the US brand. We don't know if A Kid's going to be permanent or if he's just over there. For, I hope like, so. A little excursion. Yeah, he's really good. Uh, we've seen some people move back and forth. Roddy Strong's been guesting over in NXT, so there has been some kind of fluid roster movement over there. Um, obviously, uh, Flash Morgan Webster's been out for ages. Uh, no word on when he'll be good to go again which is a shame because he's very talented. Mm -hmm. He got himself into some ridiculous shape during the pandemic as well. Shout out to him for the transformation. Uh, could be that maybe they've just given him an offer that he's hoping for a little bit more mm -hmm. or a little bit better terms. Uh, could be that he wants to test himself elsewhere. I'm sure we will find out in time, but best of luck to him in his recovery and best of luck to him with whatever he chooses. Exactly. He's a very talented dude. Lovely bloke as well. Met him uh, when we did WCPW and uh, couldn't have been nicer. Best of luck to him, like you say, and we'll keep you posted on any developments regarding that. Uh, and let's conclude by talking your Twitter questions at WhatCultureWWE. Of course, if you want to get in touch with us, first question today comes from CoolLink7, who says, Good morning, guys. If you were booking WWE, how would you debut Cody Rhodes and who you do, you'll have his first feud be against? I believe he should be at the top of the card, but I have no problem giving him a mid-card title to build prestige. Interesting. Um, I think he needs to go all the way to the top. I think you're really dropping the ball if you do anything apart from the immediate mega push mm -hmm. um, with Cody Rhodes. You cool him off straight away. Respectfully, I think you cool him off straight away if you put him on the US title or something like that. Yes, you yep, immediately, I agree. Yeah, you immediately typecast him as a mid-card guy, which is what he was before. And I think you've got to go all in with this, with the buzz, with the, the optics of stealing AEW, one of AEW's like, signature guys, and you got to go all in with this. Seth Rollins... Pun intended? A, they are. They, they are. Uh, Seth is a good first opponent. The way they've done it so far is not the way I would have done it. I would have uh, had Cody show up in Jacksonville. Uh, I don't care about AEW chance. I think it would have been a great opportunity yeah. to to build up the this guy's from somewhere else, but Seth Rollins is, is our guy. I think that's a compelling story for WrestleMania. They have the match. And then after that, Cody would go on to feud with Roman Reigns and beat him for both titles. Uh, if Roman Reigns is going to be the dual champion or if they're going to bring another one in, he could just beat him for the Universal. Whatever, whatever. I think you've got to go all in with this. And Cody coming in theoretically gives WWE an answer to the problem that they've created by not building someone compelling enough to take the belt away from Roman Reigns. He's right there, he's gonna be over huge. It's a guy they've stolen from another company. It's massive, it's mega, it's awesome, it's great. Pull the trigger, don't put him on the mid card. That's probably what they're gonna do because they can't really book that well, <laughs> but that's what I would do because I'm a genius and I should be a billionaire. Ditto. I completely, I, I completely agree. Seth Rollins should be his first match. It's going to be the best match he can probably have. Uh, arguably one of the best matches he can have on the main roster. Then you keep him busy, let's just say, for a few couple of months, right? 
and then you have him take the title off Roman Reigns at SummerSlam. That's a lovely, like, two-year thing with Roman Reigns. Like you say, there's literally no one else, especially now Big E's yeah. got a broken, bloody neck that can take the title off Roman. That's what you do. You can even babyface Roman through this if you want. I'm not suggesting that you could or not. It, it would be so good if they did. Like, because everyone loves Roman's work. He's so over as a heel and he's good at making people boo him. But like, like WWE fans in particular are so just enthralled by this man. It would be so easy to turn him babyface against this invader from another company. I know WWE have had him before, but obviously Cody became a bigger star elsewhere. Like, that's it's perfect. I don't care if you put both mid-card yeah. titles on him, it makes him look rubbish. He'll be feuding with Austin Feely by Christmas. Yeah. We'll keep you posted. Uh, no Patrick disrespect. Carter says, as we are approaching the one year anniversary of that spot, the spot I will reveal in a second, which one would you rather take every morning as your alarm clock? A Bel Air hair whip, I assume that's what you oh, mean no. by that spot. <laughs> Absolutely not. Or a Walter <laughs> Chop, keep up the oh, good work, lads. Uh, uh, uh. Imagine well, waking up to... I thought initially he meant the noise, and now I realise, yeah. rereading this, he means... The, 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 yeah, the hit. Um, oh, wow, they're both, like... like Oh, they mess people up. Both of those mess people up. You're cruel. You're very cruel. Uh, I'm going to take a Walter Chop though because it would toughen me up. Yeah. Not I'll... that the hair whip wouldn't, but the chop, you know, calloused chest with time perhaps. I don't know. Yeah. Also, I sleep with a t-shirt on, so it wouldn't hurt that much. Yeah, I'm going to have a, I'm gonna have <laughs> a pillow just across the, the, and then just take the hair whip and it'll still suck. That's but... a good, yeah. Uh, also, if you had to wake up to a WWE noise. The right to censor theme. There you go. Do you know what I'd wake <laughs> up to? Shoosh, please! Shoosh! <laughs> I love the fact they're on the Snickers advert now. They're officially <laughs> over. They are. They're way over. Oh. Good, good chat. I mean, Patrick Carter, you're a sadist, though. You want to yeah. wake up to either of those. Screw you, Pat. <laughs> Final question today comes from Matthew Gorma, who says, Good morning, legends. Oh, hashtag King's Mike. Oh, no. Why do you guys keep doing this? Oh, no, no, no. Why? Why? Good morning, legends. I would love to know if you guys formed a tag team, what would you be called and what promotion best suits y'all's gimmick? What would we oh, be called? Uh, what on earth is this? Uh, uh, mm. Ginger Snaps. <laughs> I'm Ginger and he breaks people's ankles. And I'm, and I'm Snaps. <laughs> <laughs> what, what promotion would we go to? Uh, GCW? No, we would die. We would die. We would die. We would die. DDT, right? And we would just wrestle the giant panda and the blow up. Oh, yes. Go. The giant panda, the blow up doll, the otter thing, Pokatan. We would wrestle them what all. What was that awesome promotion you went to over WrestleMania weekend a couple of years ago? With the like, like they had people like dressed as like <laughs> kaiju big battle. Yeah, <laughs> that's where I want to work. Oh, what are they dressed as there? Like monsters, like giant monsters, like and they do like a city set. Yeah, type thing, and it's supposed to be like it's big dumb fun. It is the, it, it the Doctor Cube is a prick. Yeah, it was I the first night him. we got to. That was when we got to to the USA, wasn't it? That night, yeah. and we'd been traveling all day. Oh no, all first world problems and all that. And I've never seen a group of people leave to go somewhere like, oh, I've got to go and do this. It's our first <laughs> night, we just, we just go and do it. And then come back. Phil, that's the happiest I've ever seen Phil Chambers. Yeah. And I think he got kidnapped. I think they kidnapped him and Jules, didn't they? <laughs> Dr. Cube. Da Dr. Cube. What a so guy. guess what, Kaiju Big Battle, Ginger Snaps is coming for you. Let us know the uh, suggestions the way, in the comments. But, oh God, they're going to be horrible. Be nice. A complete aside to all of this, last time I saw Dr. Cube wrestle was on WrestleMania weekend last year. He did an indie show. He was doing a death match against JTG, who's an incredible shape. Oh like, yeah. He's a beast of a guy. Put that guy Shout on TV. Shout JTG. Uh, uh, who interfered? Big Cass. Right? <laughs> What's going big, on? Big Cass interfered. Who did the commentator uh, mistake Big Cass for? Who? Test. Anyway. Jesus. Right, let's move on to today's and finally. And shout out to, oh, Adam Wilborn on Twitter, who's uh, posted a vote that I really want everyone to vote on. We're going to give the results of this tomorrow. It's a social experiment. I've written. I was thinking about that test thing. When Bia finally comes on the Raw after WrestleMania, what's it going to be like? And your options, Andy Murray, are. Spunk everywhere. Brock Lesnar, i.e. I mean, a little bit like that, but just, it was mainly just sort of wrestlers everywhere. Al Snow and Spike Dudley getting wrecked. Maven, I think, took some as well. Everybody died. Yeah. Or the Funkasaurus. <laughs> I mean, that's the, you mentioned Emelina, that's the balance, isn't it? Yeah. It'd be it's funny. one of two things. It would be funny if he gave him a dancing happy guy gimmick. <laughs> like when they uh, transformed Leo Kruger into Adam Rose. Yeah. yeah. Adam Rose was over for a bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I can't call this. 
I genuinely can't call it, so go and vote at Adam Wilborn on Twitter. You can find Andy Murray on Twitter at... At Andy H. Murray. The H stands for Heffalump. It does indeed. You can follow all of us at What Culture WWE. Make sure you subscribe to What Culture Wrestling wherever you get your podcasts from for daily wrestling podcasts. Myself and the Dadly Boys uh, reviewing Money Hour wow. and looking ahead to NXT a little bit later on today. Uh, yeah, plus let us know your thoughts, Twitter questions at What Culture WWE, as I said. But for now, my thanks to Andy Murray. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you soon. Mm.